Well, major milestone happened in my house yesterday. You moved your two oldest daughters into their college dorm, moving out of your nest. The little birds flying the nest. How'd you do? Yeah, I uh, moved Isabella and Sophia into college. And, you know, I mean, it was, to me, it was very uh, compartmentalized. I was like, all right, we're moving. I'm a mover now. And right, so and I'm moving things and, and I am putting things in places. Right, exactly. Yes. It's like I am I am <laughs> taking things out of the house and I'm putting them in the van and I am driving the van to the dorm and I am taking the stuff now out of the van and taking it up to their dorm room. That's what I am yep. doing. I am mover. Yes. Okay. And you got through that part. And, and then and I did and then all that stuff is done. And so yeah, and and th- there was a time um well, once we got everything kind of moved into their dorm room which was very easy i mean i i was anticipating it to be a little bit more difficult now they they're in the honors program and so they were able to move in a little bit earlier because they have classes that start a little bit earlier than the general um uh, population there at U of L. so i think maybe we dodged a little bit of the rush of people moving in so in and of itself helpful yeah a little bit help more helpful a little bit easier to navigate and everything did you have to build like lofts? I know we we had a loft in our dorm room, and this is back in the day. So we had like the bed up on top, and then we kind of could set up a little living room underneath the loft with the little mini fridge and some bean bags and stuff like that. Did you do anything like that? Well, no, not yet. But they can rent lofts. Oh, yeah, that's so, smart. So that is something that they can rent if they want or if they so choose. Uh, but they're going to just um, try to see how it works you know with their beds on the ground you know right now um but yeah i mean you know it it was a very basic dorm room you know Mm -hmm. and and it reminded me a lot of a dorm room that i stayed in literally 20 years ago and right, they haven't changed too much. Right, exactly. Dr- Some dorm rooms are fancier than others. You know, um, cinder block, you know, walls and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's like, all right, well, you know, not much has changed. They like it though, and they they were like, you know, it's authentic. <laughs> they, they like the authentic. fact that it was. That's a good uh, word. I know they it's they use college. Right, right. They they were like, ah, it's authentic. It's good. I'm like, all right. Well, they're they like, yeah, we, I mean, we don't want to feel like we're staying in a hotel room. I'm like, why not? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> as bougie as we can be. Right, right, for sure. So there came a time when we had everything moved in and, you know, I asked, I'm like, so how, do you, you want us to help you anymore? Like, like, what, what do you need help with? Do you, do you need help like unpacking stuff or like situating things? And so they're like, no, I mean, I think. I think we've got it from here, and it was like a, okay, well, let's take a selfie. They're like, you can go now? Were and they kind of saying, you can go Yeah, now? yeah, it was kind of a, it was kind of a, all right, I mean, I think we're just going to, you know. Uh, we're going to get settled. We're going to get settled, can... and we're going to get our room looking the way we want it. And we don't need your help to do that. And we don't need your help to do that. So it was like, all right, uh, well, well. So you, you well, found yourselves lingering at that point. Yeah, I, it, it, it was. It, they were it, like, gently trying to give you the little hint that you're lingering. I know. My, my wife and I were just kind of, I mean, it wasn't really awkward. I shouldn't say it, or make it sound like it was an awkward experience. But it, but yeah, I mean, we were just like kind of there and it was. We were done. Parents Our, are trying to prolong it, and they're just like, "Okay, all right, so all right, all right, we're good." And so I was like, "All right, selfie time." And so you know, um, we uh, uh, we left, and you know, gave them hugs. How was the walk out though? Was that is that the moment when it starts to hit you that you just left your first babies in a new strange room? Yeah, and you're walking away, and you're going to go home. Well, it's funny not because. On our way out, as as we're driving out, we uh, get to a roundabout. You know, th- there are some roundabouts there uh, on the campus of U of L, mm-hmm. and so she's like, "Oh, yeah." My wife's like, "Oh, you know, I need to call them," and so she calls them, and she's like, goes over 
the explanation of how to navigate this roundabout. It's like, okay, hey, make sure that you're not in the right lane because the right lane makes you turn right. You're going to want to um, go, you know, if you're wanting to get on the freeway, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to make sure that you're in the left lane to go through this roundabout because the if you're in the right lane. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and so then she hangs up with them and we've literally been gone three minutes. And she's like, I just, I had to, I had to tell them that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, because I didn't know Listen, if they've ever navigated a roundabout on their own before. It is my job as their mother right. to give them a heads up about roundabouts. Right. For sure. For sure. And so, you know, it really didn't, it really didn't, it hasn't hit me uh, yet, really, that they're like gone, gone. Because I. But did it last night when you got back to your house and it had less stuff and less people? Well, they. That's uh, where I think it would, so, it would hit me. So they had Irish dance practice. Oh, so you saw them there, and they <laughs> that's kind of still normal. And they, and you know, they they took their, uh, you know, the, their little sister was there, and so they brought her home, and so we saw, <laughs> and they had they had dinner at her house. So it was like, all right, well, okay. and then it they, hasn't felt too different just yet, right? No, it hasn't hasn't really felt too different yet. So, um, but I'd be I would be interested to, um, find out like who was the oldest when you moved out of your parents' house for good, because I still feel like they're going to be around. And I, and, and I, I have that thought of this is the last time they're actually going to live in our house. And that makes me sad. Yeah. But I did come back and live at my parents' house after my freshman year of college mm -hmm. at Purdue worked in a factory, an RV factory. We made parts that go on RVs. Worst job of my <laughs> life. That is when I decided I'm going to do something different. <laughs> when I when I get a like a different job, like a, a more of a career job. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but then after that summer, I didn't come back because then I did get a job at a radio station. I was also working at a salon cleaning tanning beds. <laughs> yeah, so you had a summer job yeah, and you were making and I money. Yeah, at the Olive Garden. Right, yeah, right. So, so you couldn't go back home right. because you had a job right i stayed and, working yeah and i help pay for you know books and right. lodging and all sorts of stuff i was trying to help pay for college right and remembering back to my experience i did the same thing i moved back the summer after my freshman year but then the summer of my sophomore year i stayed there on campus mm -hmm. but then my junior year i started i i moved back um i moved back home for about four months. And then my mom was like, uh, you got to go. <gasps> she, she, she was like, she was like, you, you either pay rent or you got to go. And, and, like she kind of got used to not having yeah, yeah. Benji under the roof now. Right, like, right. Nope. For sure. Yep. Now you're a freeloader. Right. You were my child <laughs> exactly. before and now you're a freeloader. <laughs> all, right, all right. So, hey, coming up next, uh, I, I want to get to Jim's comment because he messaged us and, um, he, he is literally lit. He literally lived his life like a movie. And I'll, I'll explain coming up here in just a sec on 99. And develop skills that maybe you didn't quite really fully develop when you were still living at home with mom and dad. Because let's be honest. I mean, mom and dad kind of do most of the stuff around the house, right? Even if you're an adult still living under, I don't think you help out as much as if you would if you were running your own household. Yeah, and how do you not get on each other's nerves? Yeah. It must be one of those situations where, like, he's got an exterior door to the basement. I mean, yeah. I, well, I, I've, yeah, I've got to think. It was more like an apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah where, where he can be uh, kind of separated from the upstairs portion of the house. But then you're still having to yell, <laughs> Mom! Meatloaf! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's special. Thank you, Jim. Wow, that is and, unique. You know what? I bet he that's that says a lot about Jim. That he must be a good person. That his parents wanted him around that long. That's sweet. That warms that's my heart. That's a good way to think of that. See, that's it must a good, have just been so pleasant to be around that his parents uh, was like, "No, Jim, you can't leave." That's a good. That's good what way I'm telling to... my kids right now. They have to live in my basement. Uh, okay. I'm not ready to let them go. So I'm just like, listen. Well, you've got we'll, some we'll time. We'll find a nice workbook. You can homeschool college. Just like the Summer Bridge workbooks, we'll get one for college. And then, you know, you just live in the basement, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> and we're we're going to all be a happy family forever and forever and forever. Oh, funny. All right. Well, hey, thank you for that, Jim. That was, that was good. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh my oh gosh. gosh, we just got another text. <laughs> I just saw that too. Oh, my fiance's brother is 40 and still lives at home, but he doesn't do diddly squat to help them out. I wonder if that's a situation where he never moved out or if he moved out and moved back in. Because we've had several that are, that had messaged us and said, hey, after I got a divorce, I moved back in with my parents right. for a little bit while I kind of got myself sense. back on my back on my feet. Right. Sure. Oh, they're starting to flood in. Al Kim says, you know, I know a guy who still lives in his mom and dad's basement and he's 56. Wow. <gasps> No, wait, is that a situation where they're taking, he's taking care of the parents? Yeah, I'm talking about not, happen too. yeah, I'm talking about not, n- not out of necessity. Right. You're right, right. Just because you haven't moved out. Right, exactly. Wow. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. She said, nope. Oh, wow. oh, okay. Yeah, Kim's, Kim's like, Jim, I'll see you're 36 and I'll raise you 20. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because when Dang. I when I did move back home after like it was during my junior year in college, it was maybe about four months. And my mom finally was like, OK, you're either going to have to start paying rent or you're just going to need to leave. Oh, no, I, <laughs> you're so, going to have to do the tough love at some point. Right. Uh, Mike said my brother lived with my parents for 15 years. Didn't help them at all. Very sad. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you. I feel like you. You got to there's a certain amount of learning that you can only do in the real world as an adult living on your own. Yeah, for sure. Man. All right. Well, hey, love these. uh, Love this conversation. 